I can feel it getting colder, and I can feel all the air going right here. This project that I'm planning out right now is going to be a little bit more ambitious than my other ones. It really does just affect me in my everyday life. Not to sound too dramatic, it's just my apartment is hot. Like, really hot. It's hot in the living room. It's hot in the kitchen. It's hot in Nathan's room. Is it hot in there? It's hot as hell. Nathan's my roommate. It's gotten to the point where I email management and corporate at my apartment complex at least once a week asking them to please replace the unit. Let me geek out for a second. I know that my unit is one old, two undersized, and three is running on R22, which if you know anything about refrigeration, they're going to have to replace that anyways. The point is it's hot in my apartment and it doesn't matter if you set the temperature at 80 degrees or if you set it at 72, 74 where you would normally have it. The AC unit just runs all day because it's undersized. What I'm trying to come up with in this video is a solution to my problem to at least act as some sort of space cooler as opposed to a heater that one is cheap because I'm broke and two is not wasteful. I don't want to be wasting any extra electricity or water. Now I say water and some of you might be a little confused but I'm sure you've looked at the title of this video. I'm still trying to think of it. I want to water cool my room. It sounds dumb, probably overcomplicated, overengineered, but that's this channel. I, I don't know. Okay, so just hear me out on what this system is going to be. There's three main components. There is the cold reservoir, which is the water coming from my apartment, entering my toilet. The second component is the air in my room. Even with the air running all day, it's anywhere from 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit at night. It gets even hotter during the day, and it's ridiculous. The third component is going to be what I'm adding, and that's a heat exchanger. My original plan was to try and hijack the water as it came out of this floater valve in the toilet and then run it through this. It turned out that the floater valve was too disgusting and the holes were too small, it just wasn't gonna work out doing it that way. And then I thought, why not just have it simpler and hijack the water in between the spout from the wall and the toilet. The toilet is still gonna operate just as it normally would. The only difference is the water that's gonna be held in the tank has already run through the radiator and it's gonna be a little bit warmer, hopefully. Now having the radiator just sit there could work, but I wouldn't be getting the same convective cooling that is ideal. So in order to increase that can that H value for those of you that are in engineering too. I'm gonna need a fan. Fan. The air's gonna get cooled and then it's just gonna blow on on me. I'm gonna run this fan off of an Arduino that's just set up to either a switch on the actual toilet to where when you flush it it's going to set off a timer. For those glorious 10-20 minutes after I flush the toilet my room might just be a little bit colder or at least under my feet under my desk something like that. Damn, this thing is bigger than the radiator on my condenser outside. I wanted to get something with a lot of passes. This has six passes in it because in between flushes, the water's not going to be moving. Of course, it will kind of transfer to the water that's sitting in the rest of the tubing. I primarily want to get as much water, as much mass in the actual coils at one time as possible. It's a dur Durale? I don't know. I guess next up to do is try and get fittings for this that are going to connect to some clear tubing that's going to run in between the wall and the toilet out to this. And I'll probably do that tomorrow since it's already 1030 at night. I'll just take the camera with me tomorrow to work and then during my lunch I'll go to Lowe's and get the tubing and fittings that I need to get all the crap for this video off my bed. Alright, so today is tomorrow and during my lunch break I went ahead and got the pipe fittings that I'm going to need. I got some tubing that I'm going to use to run to the radiator. And in the mail today I got delivered some cheap high CFM high RPM fans. I'm kind of worried because I was doing some research and tried to find some barbed fittings where there's a piece that goes inside of the tube and it fits in proper and I couldn't find that. I'm hoping that with the pipe clamps that I have along with some electrical tape I'll be able to make it waterproof because if this thing leaks that could be catastrophic. Like really, really bad. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure how much you can see or even how much you want to see, but I'm going to be taking this off. Ah. This is like really hard to film and I'm sure the audio is terrible, so I'm sorry. Well, maybe a couple extra twists. Does that look watertight to you? I hope so. Alright, so I'm going to slowly pressurize the line and see if the water can actually make its way all the way through this and then back into the toilet. If you hear me start screaming, or I don't know, if you see any water, just tell me and I'll turn it off. Alright, no leaks so far. There it goes, snaking its way through. Oh, the water's going. Oh, that's getting chilly. Yo, that's cold already. Alright, so it actually worked. 
everything is holding pretty tight. There's a lot of pressure on this, but I know that the pipe itself can actually hold a little over 45 PSI. Uh, there's a lot of assumptions going on right here, but I mean, it holds and it goes all the way to my toilet and it filled up the top. I promise. You know, I have yet to test these, so I guess now is as good a time as any that I've already hot glued it in. Oh yeah, those move some air. You probably hear that on the mic. I only have this board with the eight relays on it. I don't have a single relay, so I'll just make it work. This is where I'm at so far. So now my goal is just to set a simple timer, button push on trigger for this, and then delay for a certain amount of time, and then turn it off and wait for the next button press. So that shouldn't be too difficult. I'll get to it. All right, so I got the programming figured out. However, I ran into another issue. My issue, I believe, is with the fans. It's either that or I have a bum power supply because this is what's happening when the relay goes off. And can you see that? The fans turn just a little bit and then they stop, like they're being overpowered. This power supply says that it's rated for 2 amps, 12 volts, and each one of these fans is supposed to draw just 0.6 amps. That either means that this is messed up or the full load amps is greater than 2 and this is tripping out. Luckily, I have another power supply. It's 12 volts, 3 amps. This was running the LEDs that are in my living room, but I'll just use them for this. All right. Eight. Oh, jeez. Ah. It still work. Look at this. It even took a chunk of my desk with this fan, and the fan is completely fine. R.I.P. my desks on this channel. All right, I got the electronics figured out. The next thing to do is just put the radiator on the back of the device and see if it doesn't leak everywhere. Oh, it's so stupid. It's not stupid if it works. This thing looks so dangerous. <laughs> so sketch. Ah. All right, so I got it done. It's running right now. You can probably hear it. But hey, it's actually pretty chilly. I do think I might have gone a little bit overboard with the tubing. I have about 30 feet right here. I guess I can just take it anywhere I want. It actually does feel like really good. And the way I've got it set up is I just put this under my desk and I can feel all the air going right here. This is so good. And here's, I think, what makes this so cool. It's not just water sitting in there. Say that after a certain amount of time or just when I gotta go, I can flush the toilet and fresh water cycles through this. And then I'd turn it on the go. <laughs> Yo, that's so cold. And for anyone that's concerned, I've got the extension cord running into a GFCI. That's why it's plugged into my bathroom and not at the outlet right next to it. Just just in case water sprays, I don't want to start a fire or anything. Seriously, this thing is awesome. Like, I feel it better than the AC unit, like actual AC that's coming into my room on the ceiling. Between that and the fan that I have put up there and this thing, I don't think I'm going to be too sweaty anymore. I want to say don't try this at home just for the fact that you could flood your whole apartment or house and there's mains power running right next to water so just take this as educational don't actually do it i'm still new to this and i've gotten some back and forth between people wanting me to get to the point of the video and other people wanting me to explain a little bit of the design and engineering type stuff so please leave a comment down below maybe i'll make a video and see how well it does of me going through the code that i made it's super simple anybody can do it and if there's anybody out there that wants me to run through the math of it and try to figure out the efficiency and how much heat i'm dumping in my room versus how much is getting taken up by the water that might be interesting to some of y'all i think it's interesting thank y'all very much for watching through this video and I hope you were entertained or maybe learned something make sure to leave a like or subscribe down below it makes me happy and makes me feel a little bit better about how much money I spent on this project and made my whole apartment smell like a new pool I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for stopping by